I actually really enjoyed it. I feel like I'm coming into that more so leadership role. It's been like a learning curve. I think you guys can understand like it's it's hard with this team because we have so many like veteran leaders and I'm not afraid to say it. It's intimidating to like step into that and try and insert yourself there. Okay. Hello everybody and welcome back to Snacks. I'm Sam Ewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And this is a show about women's soccer, but it's also about... Lynn, do you remember that time that we watched that clip of our own snacks clips and I had that blue sweatshirt on in literally every single clip. I feel like this pink sweatshirt is the new blue sweatshirt. I can agree. I was actually thinking when you put this on, I was like, oh, you wore that last week. I know. I'm like, we're going to need a compilation of this season of snacks and it's going to be the pink sweatshirt. Yeah, stick stick to know what you know. Here's what we're doing today on the podcast. Some VAR drama (laughs) in Lynn's game. Uh, JJ Watt thinks Lynn Williams is a beast. Welcome to the club. Lindsay Horan is here. Snacks or pass is back. It's a big episode, everybody. But before we get to all that, happy Memorial Day. We're recording this on Memorial Day. And your family's there. I know. I'm literally like anxiously awaiting Christy and Sam to get here. We're going to hang out at my cousins today. They flew home to see the fam. So maybe we'll get a little cameo from Christy or Sam when they walk in. But I'm really excited to see them. Oh. I know I got to see them yesterday uh, before the game and Christy was so excited. She texted me and goes, Sam is 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes out. And I think Sam was just like Ubering from the airport or whatever. And Christy was so excited. So I'm excited they're back together. She was very excited. She was so nervous, like just antsy all morning. And I, she like oh. slept the night before and I was like, I'm shocked you got any sleep because she, I know. you know, when you're just like so antsy, like to, to, your person's coming and you're yeah. like, ah, oh, just so excited to see them. Yeah. I love that feeling, but I'm very happy for them. So some summer stuff. Yeah. How's your tree situation? You guys, I can't wait to show you. My tree situation is not fixed. Like the tree is gone, but we're still in the lack of shade situation. But my parents came over yesterday and we went to Home Depot and we planted flowers and like plants and like did mulch in my yard. And it was like so wholesome and cute. And I'm so grateful to my parents for helping me. And now my like house looks like I'm a real homeowner. Like, I have freaking flowers everywhere. What kind? Um, we got marigolds because marigolds are pet friendly, I think. I Googled it. So we have some marigolds in a planter box where the tree used to be. We, we got a rose bush and we planted the rose bush. We got, we like moved. I have these like grass plants in my garden beds and we like moved them around a little bit to like hopefully help them grow a little bit better. And then out front, we got like hanging flower pots. It's so cute. Oh. So what are you going to do really about excited. the shade? Like get an umbrella? Well, we're like chopsy turvying between two options. One option is to get a big double umbrella that like comes up under the picnic table, but then there's two umbrellas. So it's like twice as much shade. Or this is like the big real homeowner project, not just a temporary fix. We'd have to cement, put posts in the ground and then connect like kind of like a canvas sail to the posts and to the house. Oh. So we're kind of in yes. like a in between. We can't really decide. It's pro- we don't really know what we're going to do, but it's, we're in like kind of desperate need. Well, if it's going to take as long as the tree situation, we only can imagine how long this decision is going to take. I know. And it's it's just going to be a lot of going back and forth. It's just well, this is a negative here and this is a negative here and <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Just go go with your gut. Do what you think is right. Yes. Um, Lynn, we're going to get to your game. But before we do, we're in a little summer theme, Memorial Day week. Yes. What are, like, some of your summer staples? Like, it's the first day of summer. What are you wearing? What are you drinking? What's your, like, vibe? Okay. Well, first and foremost, a staple is sunscreen. Sunscreen. You need sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Wake up, moisturize, sunscreen. That's what we have to do. Okay. I'm here. But I feel like I'm going to have some kind of sunglasses on. Yeah. A cute little, like, you know those dresses that I love to wear, like those athletic dresses? Yeah. They're, like, cute, but they you can get, like, sweaty in them. Totally. And probably some sneakers. What I love you. That. I'm feeling like Oh, a, and a La Croix. Uh, yeah. I'm feeling, this is Christy texting me. Be there, 1138. That's 14 minutes from now. I'm thinking a little tank, a little high-waisted short. A little Birkenstock Ooh. or a little sandal, Ooh. a little sunglasses. Yes. Every once in a while, a hat. Oh, iced coffee. How could we forget that? Who do we think we are? Yep. Everybody show your iced coffees. I already drank mine. <sighs> Duncan. I'm drinking Duncan. We, 
Remember when we were like, we're going to be sunglass girls and just like only ever spend our money on like nice sunglasses. <laughs> yes. I feel like when, with nice things though, like I can justify in my head, like spending money on sunglasses because it's like a lot, but it's not that much versus exactly. like five thousand dollars on a bag. I'm like, that's I know. crazy. I know it's like it's like a splurge. It's like a splurge. It is a splurge, but it's like, but a, it's not a, like mm, this is. I can well, like you're like this isn't gonna break the bank. Like I can still wiggle around this. Like this is fine. But like yeah. a bag is like investment. Yeah, like a splurge versus investment. Yeah, for sure. Sunglasses are are uh, accessory of the summer. Yes. Sunglasses and sunscreen. Yeah. And that's not really an accessory, but it is. I went to a little gathering this weekend and there was a drink mix, which you could have on its own. You do not need to be mixing anything into this mixture, but it was like just in a blender, watermelon, lime, and mint. And it was literally so good. I feel like we have that in not blended form a lot as well. Just like watermelon. Yeah, just like cut up. Watermelon is so yeah. good. I, watermelon, I don't know if it's underrated, but it's it's rated. I it's just think delicious. it's like you could literally just sit there and eat a whole bowl of it. And like all you're doing is like hydrating yourself. Like it's like, it's just the best Hydration, food. Bloated bellies. It's delicious. Yeah, it's so yummy. Okay, well, this makes me want to hurry up so we can go outside because it's a beautiful day here. I know. So let's get through this. Let's move on to soccer. So the soccer, the storyline here is the, the the table's tight. The top of the table is tight. We got um, teams two to five at the table are all on 16 points. And then one team is on 17 points. Who's that? That's us. The bats. That's the bats. Go bats. Go bats. Okay. So you guys tied. This was yesterday. You played at Washington Spirit. You tied one to one. Bruninha's goal was sick. Yeah, it was it was nasty. It was so sick. I like watched her like I thought she was maybe gonna pass it to Christy, and then I watched her just like take her touch and it all opened right up. And but then her shot was sick. Yeah, like are we shocked? No, I was just like all right. Yeah, very cool. I don't even know. Like I need to watch it back, but like I don't even know how she got in that position. I I don't know like why she was so wide open, but I know she was playing right back and Taylor had the ball out wide. And then I just assumed mm-hmm. that nobody tracked her because she came so far across the field. Oh, she like ran from outside back to that position or like, how did she end well, up? I don't in know the like the field? Wh- at what point she got there, but she was so far from her position that I assume nobody picked her up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need to watch it back, but it was sick. It was and sick. Yaz's goal was sick as well. That it got called back. I know. I, it, I'm going to count it as a goal because it was so good. I know. Let's, how did that go down for you guys? Like, obviously you all thought that that was a goal and then it gets called back on a handball at the beginning of the play, but it was such a sick goal. And I was like pumped for you guys because it was a great diving header, a great cross in. What did you guys think on the field about the VAR call in live play? Like I had an angle where I saw the ball bounce off Neely into her arm. And I was like, this could be a handball. Yeah. But it didn't get called. And then after the game, I was able to watch what VAR saw. Yeah. Everybody, everybody keeps saying like the NWCL is the only league with VAR, blah, blah. It's amazing. It's incredible. But I'm like, but it's not because we only have six cameras. So, so they didn't have overt- a good view of it. I don't think it was a good view and I don't think it was clear and obvious. And so I think that's what VAR keeps saying. Like we're going to tell them to go look at PKs and handballs and stuff that is clear and obvious. And I think in the reverse, we've seen offsides calls they said, you guys need to go to VAR to make sure this is not offside. And the ref has said, well, I can't really tell because this camera angle is terrible because mm. we only have mm-hmm. six cameras. And I think that's the same thing that happened with the handball. Um, the handball. I'm like, that angle is not clear and obvious. So how are you overturning this when you didn't see it on the pitch? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like maybe after the World Cup, we could like do a deep dive into VAR calls in the league once we have like more examples and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just have a VAR episode. Yeah, I just think that, like, I would love to know what they are telling them because I just don't think that was – it should have been overturned. Obviously, I, I'm on the side of it Yeah, affecting us the most, so I might be a little biased. But I also just felt really bad for Yaz. Like, I thought that was, it was just a sick goal. I know. It was so, like, that's, ugh. like, so brutal. That's t- really tough. And then, unfortunately, that would have – I think that would have put you guys up two to nothing. And then two nothing. Yeah. Um, the spirit equalized 
So the game ended one to one. Um, but you guys stay yeah. at the top of the table and you'll just keep it going. Yeah, we'll just keep on keeping on. We got a big week coming up. It's three games back to Challenge Cup stuff. So I just think we're on the rise. You know, I I also think that people looked at our last game and were like, this was a fluke with um, Seattle. And yes, it's frustrating, but I think that we had a very complete game and we had more opportunities. So people are sleeping on the bats. Some There's some joke in there about the bats. I don't know sleeping upside down in a cave but like I'm yeah gonna have to think about it for like a week and yeah there definitely, um, there definitely okay, is um okay let's move on Chicago beat Orlando one to nothing the Red Stars got a much needed win I was actually really happy for them after the game I saw them all like celebrating and they seemed so happy and I was happy for them I feel like they've had like kind of a tough run of things lately yeah Alyssa dethrones Ashlyn Harris for the most saves in a cell history she is now has 520 which is crazy yeah but did you see the save off the corner she made some awesome saves i don't know how she got up and like threw herself around like that but good for her i know that was awesome i was pumped for her and and happy for orlando i i mean happy for chicago i saw mal was out there too after like mm. with her teammates hugging them and she had a smile on her face and that made me happy too am i like standing chicago or what is that an expression i i think i think you're just when somebody or a team has been going through it you just are excited to see them get yeah. a win. Remember like, uh, I think it was like two years ago, maybe three years ago when at the time sky blue hadn't won a game yet. Yeah. And after our North Carolina game, we went into the locker room and we were like, please, like it was towards the end of the season. And we were like, yeah. we just want you guys to win. <laughs> like, I just think when, when you're having a rough go, you, even if you like are on another team, you're like, I just, I know that feeling yeah. of like, this is really, shitty. so having any signs of like a smile is nice to see. Yeah. For sure. So that was good, but Chicago got the win. Yeah. Uh, the rain beat Angel City four to one. Um, Angel City scores first, but then the rain come back with four straight goals. And now they're still in second place. And freaking Pino assist queen, three assists in one match. I think I saw she's the, the fifth player to ever do that. And you were also in that five. Wowzers. I had no idea. Yeah. Go Lynn, mean. I think you're at the top of a lot of people's lists right now. Slash forever. Best friend. You're at the top forever. of my friend list. You're at the top of mine as well. And so my God, and my, this podcast and my co-host list. Well, if I wasn't at the top of that, then this wouldn't exist. Anywho, <laughs> the wave and the thorns tied one to one. It was two late goals uh, in the 86th minute. Jakobsen scores for the wave. And then just three minutes later, the thorns Reyes equalizes off a corner. So that's a tie. That's how ties happen. One when <laughs> both teams score the same amount of goals. I was watching that game. It was like late at night and I was just staying up watching. And then all of a sudden went to bed, woke up and I was like, what the heck? Happened? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, whoa. I know. Um, love a late game, late game equalizer. I think they call the late game. Isn't it when crazy stuff happens? They call it end of cell after dark. Yes, when the late do. games and they have craziness. Yes. Am I picking up yeah. on that correctly from the social medias? From the on the lines? <laughs> from the lines. <laughs> um, okay. The Courage played racing. They beat them two to one. Madsen scores from the touchline. Basically, I don't even know what angle that was. And then Caroline scores a Caroline goal. Step over in to the top corner, naturally. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking about Brazil? Like, Brazil's having some players performing really well in the league. Do you think... They're going to do well at the World Cup. That was a very direct question. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think they are. I I read something that Marta basically called the Brazilian girls and was like, you guys need to play in the NWSL. And then they all were like, okay. And they all came to the NWSL and here they are. Showing wow. Out well, yeah. So I I mean, who else? Caroline, Marta, Bruninha, Dabinha. There, is, there must be a few others. But the, of those four names alone, I think all of them are doing awesome. Well, yeah, I think they all are have awesome. been scoring. Yeah. <laughs> They're incredible. Um, no, I think that like we talked about this in the 2019 World Cup leading up to that, like uh, just the transition, the fitness of the NWSL going into World Cup and also mm -hmm. playing up into that, like getting in your form mm -hmm. and not having to take a break. And obviously we talk about this all the time with like what uh, seasons are better, what system like the European yes. or the NFL. We actually but... are going to hear from Lindsay Horan later in this episode about her thoughts on that yeah. because her season in France is just ending. And we asked her uh, if she thinks it's an advantage or a disadvantage to have a break right now or to be like kind of coming into full form right before the World Cup. So we'll see what she says about that in a few minutes. 
Okay, so speaking of the World Cup, um, we also heard an announcement this week from Katerina Macario that she will not recover from injury in time for the World Cup, which is devastating. She tore ACL yeah. at the tail end of 2022, and she's just still working on a recovery. We, I think we both know sometimes how when you have a tight time like that, like that and it just doesn't go perfectly, it's just brutal to hear. Yeah, I mean, I can only imagine what she's going through, especially, you know, this would be our first World Cup. But I think it's it's really cool that at such a young age, she's able to see that hopefully she'll have a long career and she's prioritizing the longevity of her career yeah. versus just a short bout of time. Um, not that that makes the decision any easier or the emotions any easier, but I think that that's really cool to see a young player being like, no, I'm going to put my health over this one event. Yeah, for sure. Well, we send her our best and we hope that she recovers healthily. We also, as we said, want to do a deep dive into kind of this ACL situation. And so we are working on that behind the scenes to bring more conversation around that. And then I also just wanted to add Lynn. JJ Watt was on Pardon My Take last week and he was just speaking about how women's soccer players are tougher than men. And they showed the (laughs) clip of you scoring with your elbow splint, like right after you broke your elbow. So big shout out from JJ Watt. Thanks, JJ, for for that. Um, uh, it's so funny when I see pictures and videos of that time. Now, I feel like this season has been going on for a year. Like, this Same. season feels forever. So I'm like, I can't believe that happened to me this year already. I'm like, you broke your elbow this year and it got better and got engaged and have scored, like, 11 goals. And, like, uh, yeah, I'm like, what is happening? Like, I feel like this... Two months, three months, however long we've been playing has, it could take up nine months of time. I know. Like that's how many events have happened. Yeah. You've had an eventful two to three months, Lynn. Keep them coming. Keep, keep, keep them coming. coming. This is now our second Snacks Hall of Fame segment. Let's do it. So this week, our entry into the Snacks Hall of Fame is an absolute legend of the game. The Snacks Hall of Fame is brought to you by Nike. American hero, Brandy Chastain, you're being inducted. I know you had probably been inducted to other things, but like this is the best one. So congrats. Yeah. She's a two-time FIFA World Cup champion in 1991 and 1999, two-time Olympic gold medalist, U.S. Women's National Team all-time best 11, SB Award for best female athlete, FIFA World Player of the Year, Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. She scored the goal that started a dynasty and so much more. She's an absolute legend. She's joined the National Soccer Hall of Fame, Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame, and now the Snacks Hall of Fame. Yay. Also, let's figure out what snack she is. (laughs) Brandy has to be like an iconic snack. Just because that one moment of like, obviously she had a very storied career, but I feel like it's that one moment that's like, what is like the snack? Doritos. Oh. Like the red Doritos. Yeah, you were going like savory. In my mind, I was doing chocolate bars for some reason. Oh, I was thinking like Snickers, a hundred, a hundred grand bar or something like that. Oh, I kind of like that. I just don't know if that's like the most iconic snack. No, it's not. So, so that just kind of I don't know why that popped into my brain. I mean, I love it. It's though. just, it's just delicious. Um, I like the Doritos. Like, I think that there's a lot to it. It's like a flavor blast. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, it's like a standalone triangle. And you're like, that's a red Dorito. Like, I know what that is. I know exactly what that is. Yeah. All right, Brandy Chastain. You're a Dorito, Brandy. You are an original Dorito. Welcome to the Snacks Hall of Fame brought to you by Nike. Um, All right. Next up, we have Lindsay Horan. Linda. So don't move. We'll be right back. She's a World Cup winner, an Olympic bronze medalist, UEFA Women's Champions League champion, 2018's NWSL MVP, 2021's U.S. Soccer Female Player of the Year, and a five-time, she believes, cup champion, although that is not the record. And as of Sunday, last Sunday, she is a member of the 2022-2023 French League Champions, as well as Coupe de France Champion OL Feminine. Great. It is Linda. Great pronunciation. Thank you. It is Linda. What do you call her, Lynn? The Great Haran. Oh. Great. Do you call Lindsay Haran? I call you Linda or Lindsay or Linz. Yeah, that's you know, about she's, it. She's in my phone from when we were like 14 years old as Skunky, and I've still not changed it. Like I promise you, Never like in our nickname. group chat, it says Skunky and Lynn Williams. 
<laughs> so weird. I'm so glad you're not going to tell anyone why that was my nickname. <laughs> right? Lindsay, do you re- do you remember? Uh, right. um, it was like one of my first couple of camps where Jill goes. We were watching oh film, gosh. and Jill goes, "Lynn," it like called me out to try to say something, but you thought she said Lynn's, so you immediately ra- started talking, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, that that's my answer." <laughs> It was the first time I knew the answer to her question, and she wasn't even calling on me. <laughs> but thank God, because I had no answer. I was like, I-, I don't know. So you immediately just picked it up, and I was like, okay. I know. I, I felt so embarrassed anyway, because, yeah, she said Lynn. It was just yeah. like tough times back there, because everybody was like stressed. Yeah. Yes. Those, those <laughs> were times edge. of high stress. Oh, the meetings were so much stress. Okay, Linda, you are you get to fly back to Colorado to go to your brother's wedding. Yay. Yeah. After winning the league, what? Ha, tell us about it. How are you feeling? What are you wearing? Oh my Most gosh! What are you wearing? Um, okay, I don't know if you two know, but my brother's fiance, she's Indian. It's like the, it's not four days, but it's like the three day event, like oh, Indian, wow. oh yeah, uh, celebration, yeah. So I actually get to fly back on Thursday for uh, rehearsal dinner, and then Friday's the Mendy. So that's when you do the wow. henna. So yeah. I might have henna. Hopefully, when I see you guys next camp, whatever. As like the sister of the groom, does your like it's specific henna? Like, does it mean something? I don't Do you know. I I don't know like all the detail. I literally haven't spoken to my brother Nadidi about anything because I thought it was going to jinx my chances of going. <laughs> so I'm like panicking now and making sure I have everything. But I I know it's. I think it's going to be a lot and I'm doing it with her on Friday. So it's cool. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. That's really cool. Okay. What else? Um, Oh, get this. So my brother, um, <laughs> this is so funny. So like the celebration, you start with the groom coming in, um, like represented by his family, walking him up to the reception or whatever. And usually he's on an elephant or a horse or what that's the tradition. Uh huh. So, one time I went to the Denver Zoo and I did an appearance there and I fed the elephants. So my brother texted me and said, hey, do you have any contact where you could get me an elephant? And did you say, yeah. Yeah, I do. Did you? I was I was like, why in the world do you think I could just get an elephant? <laughs> hey, I this is like, because I fed him one time. From the national team, I'm calling in for an elephant. But like, for some reason, Lindsay, I like feel like you did get him an elephant. No, I didn't. So he's oh. coming in on a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Oh, Fair. well, that's sick. <laughs> Did you try at least? Did you contact the zoo? No, that's no. <laughs> Can oh you God, imagine? I'm sorry, you guys. This is reminded me of that time that Abby went, went into the breakfast. You guys know what I'm about to say? No. When she went no. into the breakfast, she goes, oh, hi, like I'm on the national team. Oh, my gosh. And- and the woman was like, okay, like had no idea what she was talking about. And she was like, you can sit wherever you want. And Abby <laughs> like thought it was like a team, like we had like a team section. <laughs> you guys remember that? Yeah, it was at no. a hotel, and she goes, "Hi, I'm Abby with the national team." It's like, Lady's sick. like so- but it's making me here. Hi, I'm Lindsay with the national team. I'm here. I'm calling in regards to an elephant rental. <laughs> He's like, "Ma'am, this is the zoo. We don't rent out the elephants." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is that was a tangent. L O L. So that didn't happen. My parents said, "We'll get you a nice car to ride in on." That's cool. Because he, he's That's supposed probably to be- also like less liability. Yeah. Some elephant stomping. Let's clean up. (laughs) Sorry. Like the elephant wasn't never going to happen. And the horse, like my brother's like deathly allergic. So do you plan on like dancing at the wedding? Yeah. Okay. Well, what's like your favorite wedding song to dance to? I haven't been to a lot of weddings. I, you, you know me, I just have to have drinks and I'll, I'll be up there. Yeah. For sure. I think my, my tops are Mr. Brightside. For a, really? for a good stomping, screaming fest. Okay. Okay. Don't stop believing. Classic. Okay. Everybody Why knows not? the words. Everybody loves it. Yeah, you're more of like you want a wedding sing along, not a yeah. wedding dance. Yeah. I really do. Uh, I really do. I feel like any two thousands rap is like a good wedding love situation. That. I feel like that's more me than where Sam's going, but I like <laughs> Sam's options. Well, in case you're up there, in case somebody hands you the aux cord, put on Mr. Brightside and it'll it'll be a, a huge hit. 
I don't think my brother will allow that, but we will try. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure play... they have somebody running the music. <laughs> is he going to play Cupid Shuffle? Oh. Everybody's like, you cannot play this at my wedding, but it really gets people up and going. I don't think you have to like even try to get people up for Indian weddings. I think it's just like, You got to try to get them to sit down and have some water. They're yeah. going hard. <laughs> Hydrate a little yeah. bit. Yeah, four days in a row. Oh my god! Wow, four days. I didn't really. Well, think that is it. that's amazing that you get to go. I'm like, obviously, it sounds crazy to say it's amazing you get to go to your brother's wedding, but like in our life, I feel like that is amazing. And during the game, we we only had to tie to, like, hopefully win because we mm-hmm. would win our last game of the season, hoping. So I think I was the only one on the field that was so freaking stressed that we were still <laughs> zero zero, and screaming at people like I'm pr- I'm playing the six. Sam so I'm sprinting into the box every time and like Lindsay and I want to see your there. numbers yeah I I ran 11.5k <laughs> oh my gosh she's a as fit a, girl as a six anyway and then we scored in the 88th minute and I started bawling my eyes out on the field oh. and and everyone's like Lindsay it was the French league like it's like a big deal but like yeah. you're bawling your eyes out yeah. this isn't Champions League and I'm just like they know. They know it's my brother's wedding. But yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Aww. Who scored? Sorry that I don't know this. Um, Sydney. Br- I'm not saying her first name correctly. We call her Bruni. Uh, okay. She's she's Danish, and she's like had a, a rocky season as well, like ups and downs. And then she scores this goal, subbing into the game like 88th minute. It was insane. Oh my gosh. Did you give yeah. her a big old smooch on the head? You got to look at the pictures. Like she's <laughs> holding my head like this, and I'm this close to kissing her. And like all my teammates you might were just like, "Just do it. Just do it." <laughs> I said it. I said it to her on the field. I want to kiss you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I kissed her forehead. Oh, very cute. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of parties and weddings and all the things, people want to know who celebrates uh, better, Leon or Portland or the national team. No, no one will ever be like World Cup celebration yeah. um, in 2019. I'm Tell sorry. Me about it. Uh, <laughs> But when we won the Champions League, um, like, they do it right here. They take us to Saint-Tropez, and we do, like, a two-day celebration. Yeah. it's It was, like, the most insane thing in my life. That's tough to beat. Yeah. That's Portland, you got so some sick. Big, big party shoes to fill, Portland. Sorry, me, you would love it. Episode. Yeah, I know. I would love it. It would be a liability for everybody, though. Um, That's okay. Okay, so you are... Wrapping up your season in Lyon, the World Cup is this summer. You have also played for PSG. So you went straight from college to PSG, back to Portland, and then over to Lyon. What has been like some of your like biggest learning lessons from like those transitions back and forth? Like it, it's crazy because like the time at PSG, like I think looking back on it, I wish I would have taken more out of that, taken more out of those three years, like ex- like let myself enjoy it more let myself experience it more but I think all in all like that experience showed me like what the standards are for a professional athlete what the Mm -hmm. standards are in the international games and playing with like some of the best players in in the world but also just like living on your own and like doing things yourself and the cultural change like that was my my PhD time and then like going back to Portland I mean it was just I mean, you know, like the the league in in France is just so different from the league in the NWSL. So it was like Lindsay just had to change everything, not everything in my game, but like adapting to that yeah. league mm-hmm. and the way we play. And but also like being able to like bring my own game and then like coming to my own at Portland. And yeah, it was just, I think, again, opposite ends of the spectrum with those those two experiences. And then like coming here to Lyon, it's it's so amazing. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm just uh, getting to like impact the team and the game in a different way because I'm older, more experienced, and like I can actually enjoy like playing in France again. Because like, I, I don't think I really enjoyed it my last time. But yeah, yeah it's, it's been like one of the coolest experiences the past 18 months. So yeah, did you think that you, when you came back to Portland, you were going to go back to France after your first experience? absolutely not (laughs) I thought like at some point I would go back to Europe because I just like think football in Europe is so great and Champions Mm -hmm. League is like I mean the coolest competition other than the World Cup and Olympics but I don't think I ever saw myself going back to France because of my experience and I didn't like want to have to like put myself through that again or like 
think about like if it would be the same or or whatever but here we are (laughs) you were like one of the very first people to just bypass college but what's different with you than what's happening now is a lot of players are bypassing college but they're going into the NWSL which is like familiar um, territory just being on home turf but you went Uh all the way overseas we've talked about it like if this opportunity was there for us when we were growing up would me and Sam take it do you feel like you would redo it would you like tell people now that have the opportunity like yes it's time you can come overseas and you won't have the same experience that I had like it's it's a good environment like what are your feelings Wait, what did you what did you guys say? Well, we Lynn and I we've been talking about this kind of week in and week out. Like there seems to be a lot more players now going into the league as teenagers yeah. and, and holding off on school and college for now or whatever it is they're doing. And Lynn and I are both kind of like, damn, like that's I didn't even like think about it at the time, but imagining the kind of training that they're getting and being put into that professional environment like you were sooner. Like yeah. it, it kind of feels like it's an advantage for your playing career and I think Lynn and I have said, like, we think we did, like, learn a lot about being a, a grown up when we went away to college. But I think the focus on soccer would have been obviously more professional in a professional league. So I think both of us are kind of like, dang, I wish that had maybe been an option or I had considered that. But the t- it's such, such different timing. But I think your situation is super interesting because you did do it and it was like 10 years ago. And it wasn't like you were like, I'm going to go into the, well, there wasn't a league here, but. You were like, I'm going to go overseas and be away from my family so young. Yeah, but I and I feel like that was the only that was the only other option at the time. But I, you know, for so long, I think like when I was 14 or 15, like, you know, my coach like said, oh, you can do it. Like you go train with a, you know, a professional team in Europe or whatever. And like the second he said that there was a possibility, I was just like, there's not one bit of me that wants to go to college, you know. But then when I get asked today obviously yeah like what you said players going to the NWSL like more players are are going pro early and it's like the coolest thing in the world for me to see but I was still like I don't say like guys go to Europe like go go train with PSG or go train with uh Leon or uh sign a contract there because it's still it, no matter what it's gonna be like it's hard it's still hard for me because I'm yeah. away from my family I'm away from friends like I don't live with Tyler like it's not I freaking haven't been with Ferguson for 18 months. Like it's, it's still like so difficult, but I'm like, our careers are really short. So if this is going to give me the best opportunity to like grow as a player, then I'd rather do this now. And yeah, I know. I, I agree. Do you feel like you like paved the way for girls? Like kind of soon after you, I think Mal did Mm something similar. Like, do you feel like you were like, I don't know if you technically were the first to ever do this, but like, do you feel like you kind of opened that door for people to start thinking about it? Yeah, I think I was the first female soccer player in the U.S. to do it. So I feel like people forget that because I'm not the one that like went to NWSL or anything like that. Yeah. But I do think it like it did open people's eyes to it. Like, oh, Lindsay did it. And it was talked about so much. For yeah. So <laughs> long and long. people got so annoyed. <laughs> but <laughs> but then it was just like, oh, my gosh, like okay Lindsay did make it to the national team like she's like once I became a little bit more relevant with U.S. soccer than it was talked about and then I think that opened the door for like some younger players coming up like you know Olivia Moultrie or yeah Mal like obviously Mal was in college for a little bit but yeah but it's like it's so funny like if you think about like the the path so like you do it and then Mal does it but you're both from like Colorado and then it opens the door for like Soph who is also from Colorado but Mal Crazy. was able to like talk to you about it I'm assuming and say like get your perspective and I'm assuming Soph did the same so you kind of were just like the first person who didn't really have anybody to talk to because it was like new territory and you just did it and look at you now look at me look at her now (laughs) am am I all right you're You're just the best Linda Linda do your like French teammates think that you're like super American no you know what they say I'm the most European American that they know, but I do. Wow. They, Did you just I make that up? A... What a compliment. This is what Otta Hagerberg just said to me the other week. <laughs> is it cause you're like, like not loud and obnoxious. <laughs> like, I feel like my, I feel like my man city teammates were like, Oh my God, this girl what is, is this? so American. She's screaming at us. Just when I would just go, good morning. 
they would be like, what the fuck is this girl? Sam, you you are like that. Like when we went to Mexico too. I know. I'm, I know. I, I bring a manic like, energy sometimes. Whoa. But what is that? Like, sorry, you're being nice and like excited to see everyone. Like, sorry that. Exactly. But I, I think that <laughs> no offense to my Frenchies, but I think that's what they miss out on it a little bit is like maybe coming in with a smile on their face and saying good morning is not a bad thing do you, th- do you think it's just because like they don't in france do you see the sun a lot like do they just need some more like sun in your life i'm giving them a bad rep because actually everyone on this team is like super nice and like will come in and like say mm-hmm. Como se va? like how are you like you know but yeah we're we're just like a little bit more over the top and super positive yeah. and <laughs> <That's> loud <fair. laughs> you know me <laughs> on the field i'm positive poly too and just like cheer on everyone and yeah they they don't like that sam i remember you just coming back and telling a story about how um obviously this is england not france but w- how you do like small sided games or like rondos and you start counting and everybody's like what are you doing like why are you counting oh god like one time i was keeping score <laughs> and literally people were like no one else was <laughs> they were like shut up <laughs> You're like, but, but like, how do you know if you've won? Well, yeah, but I remember like it was like the score was getting like run up though. And I, I like was being wicked obnoxious about it. Like every time it would go and I'd go eight to three, nine to three, <laughs> 10 to three. And I think they were like, who is this? Like who invited her? Wait, in Rondos, did you count how many passes? And then like, if you got 20, they would have to stay in. I think Because they so. don't do that here. Oh no. No, they're just like. No, we just like you win it, like you go out, and I was like, no, we got twenty passes. They should have yeah. to sit in there for another another round. And a split, punish yourself. And a med like, in there. And- yeah, <laughs> and all the things that we do yeah. when we're psychopaths. At yeah, camp. I. You know yeah. what we do here is that like the first pass isn't free, so it's madness. You're like, how how am I gonna get this first pass off? It's madness. No. It's madness. I feel like Rondo's on every team has like one slightly different caveat. Yeah. It does. Yeah. If people don't know what rondos are, it's like a war- kind of like a warm up possession drill where there's like five or more people around the outside, and you usually have a box made out of cones, and then there's like two people in the middle, and you just like play keep away. But it's supposed to be like really quick ball movement, one touch, two touch. It's like fun and tricky, and it's like kind of everybody's favorite part about playing soccer is that you get to do rondos at the beginning. <laughs> I hate, hate, hate a two touch rondo. I'm like, it should be one touch. If you're the person, oh, in the middle, I'm like, we do that just- here. I hate it. I think it should be one or two. And you have to make a decision. As the person in the middle, a two touch is terrible. You're like. If you make it small enough, it's fine. Fair enough. That's fair. Good point. Enough about rondos. Can we talk about the World Cup? Yes. We sure can. All right, Linda. As a mainstay of the U.S. women's national team, what era do you think the team is in right now? There's lots of veterans on the bubble in terms of making the team lots of young players gonna probably make it so like what are you how are you feeling this is wild because i like haven't been able to feel much because i just wanted to get through season and then i could like focus on the cup of the worlds it's so freaking exciting and this the team is like but you know how it is like we we need like the roster to be named and then it's like you you know where you're where we're at or who we have and everything but i think this this has to be like the youngest team that will ever have yeah so how do you feel about like yourself and your role because you're very much a veteran thanks lynn um, an oldie if you will ancient um well, she's dusty like, bones <laughs> i'm turning 29 soon i don't like that oh my gosh i just turned 30 two days ago it's crazy um uh, yeah, i've been 30 for months old old dusty <laughs> bones over there okay but yeah I, I i actually really enjoyed it i feel like i'm coming into that you know more so leadership role it's been like a learning curve i think you guys can understand like it's it's hard with this team because we have so many like incredible veteran leaders and sometimes it's like i'm not afraid to say it's like it's intimidating to like step into that and try and be Mm -hmm. like insert yourself there and obviously get the respect from the rest of the team and like you have to earn that and it's not (laughs) Like, I I think I've been on the team for, like, 10 years now, and, like, I still feel nervous to, like, step into that role. I think I've obviously gotten better with it, and and I think, for me, it's really helpful that I have Becky because she's helping me through it, and she's super approachable, like, you know, helping me with anything or anytime I have the captain's armband or making me feel like I own that role. So it's been hard, but I've really enjoyed it, and I hope I'm doing a good job. 
I think you're doing a great job. I'm not really there, but from the outside, it seems like you're doing a great job and I'm so excited for you. It's really fun to see you guys like stepping up and being in those leadership positions. Cause I remember really when all of us were just like newbies and like nervous just to go into camp and like to do or say anything. And so seeing you guys like take charge out there is like really, really cool. And I'm really excited for you guys. Is there a tactical difference between preparing at national team camp versus for a club team? Yeah. I think club team, you have all year with them. Like you have all the time in the world to adjust and to form different tactics or be able to switch things on the fly or work things out through the week or whatever. I think when you're with the national team, like you know, throughout the year, you have 10 days together within like a two month period or whatever. So for me, it's like any coach that's coming in and giving any kind of tactics, it has to be simple. It has to be like laid out for everyone to understand. And like you have play- players in all different places that are coming from all different club teams with all different tactics. So simplify everything and be able to like put together the best squad for those games and the best tactics for those games are really intense job the more I like learn about it or like hear you know what they're looking for on the men's national team side and like all these things like the new sporting director talking about I think it's like it's so insane like it's not like Flacco doesn't have a lot of time to like do all these things with us and then everyone in the NWSL is playing right now and they, we're just coming to camp we have like one month to prepare for our first game and like have the tactics for that game but then every other game as well <laughs> yeah it's the most that has to be the most intense pressure as a as a coach yeah I also think too like when you're with your club team you have so much time to like hear the information a lot so like if you forget then you can like they'll reiterate it again and again and again so you have like months and months of time to be like oh yeah this is what we do it's like now scarred into my brain with the national team you have to be so hyper focused because you're like I'm gonna hear this information maybe one or two times and like I need to remember all the information yeah one or two times ciao yeah exactly you're like (laughs) get out and you're like oh i messed up so i think like that on on the player side too like the coach side obviously they have so much craziness and they have to simplify it but you have to be triple double hyper focused so like i feel like it's exhausting like mentally that's why certain players like make it and certain players like it's you have to be there. You have to be present every single day and you have to be spot on every single day. Yeah. The first camp I came back from my injury, I like forgot, like obviously physically you're like, oh, this is going to be tiring and exhausting. But I think I just forgot that my brain had to be on all the time. So I would just like go to bed and pass out. So I was like, <laughs> holy, holy, shit. like that was exhausting. I know. Lindsay, do you have a like favorite, like, European player who's either like on your team or maybe in your league or you've played in against in Champions League that you w- think people should watch at the World Cup? I think people need to focus more on Wendy Bernard. If anyone doesn't know, she's a captain of France and Leon. Do you think people don't focus on her? Just I think a lot of the time people obviously don't focus on defenders, but I think like Wendy does not get enough respect for. The player that she is or enough recognition for the player she is because she stayed at like such a consistent level for so many years and it's like maybe Wendy doesn't like win the Ballon d'Or or the best player in the world whatever but like she's probably one of the best players I've ever played with like she is insane and she's the funniest person in the world <laughs> by the way like she she is crazy like she scared the sh- out of me when I first came here but like she's actually really cool yeah I might I might just throw Wendy in there I love that yeah the old have teammate you been, have you been scouting the girls over there and are you gonna like let us know watching them like a hawk yeah <laughs> what are they, they have no idea just have this isn't on our script either Lindsay but I'm curious now have you talked to any of the French girls about what was going on with their federation yeah it was a lot it was more the management of the coach mm-hmm. um and this is like all out there anyway so it's not like I'm saying anything I shouldn't say but um she was just she was so so poor and so poor with the players and everything like on the field that that's like one thing but also the management off the field and you know like France they hasn't they haven't won anything and I don't I don't know the timeline here yeah but like for them signing her again it was just kind of absurd finally Wendy like Wendy 
felt like mentally like she she couldn't do it anymore like she was not yeah. going to go to the world cup if she continued with the team yeah it's insane it was the same with you know diani mary katoto some of the best players for france and, and do they like, feel like the, the actions that they took helped lead to the resolution of the problem? Wendy will never say, like, she was the reason, but I think, yeah. like, you have the captain of France, one of the best players on the team, and the two main scorers on the team. I think that shows it all, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I think they finally were just like, okay. Wow. It's amazing how much it's, like, another thing, like, women have to do and to stand up and be like, this isn't good enough. Well, imagine she doesn't go to the World Cup. I know. Because she's making it. It's, but like, what? for me, it's also like, why didn't the whole team do it? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I I don't I don't know that much about it. I don't know why I'm ranting to you guys about it. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I, all, both of us are like, I literally don't know. <laughs> I know. I mean, we've definitely seen like the power of collective action. I think we've had a yeah. lot of issues ourselves that we were fighting for and doing things together always seemed like the strongest course of action. So I guess that's something we learned and hopefully other countries who have to face similar frustrating circumstances can learn yeah. from everything that's gone on. I know Spain has been in a weird situation. I don't know enough about that really to like talk about it right now, but maybe we could next time, Lynn, just yeah. going into this world cup. I think one of the like storylines is kind of this player at players advocating for their own welfare and the the investment from their federations. I think that's something that's been like a huge talking point this year. And France was definitely one of those teams that had to do that. And they got one of the best coaches they probably could have gotten. I know it, it's crazy though. Like they, it's a short amount of time now to get everybody on the same page. And you hate to see that you want at the world, every single team to be at their best. So hopefully that, that happens and they can work that out. And, but I'm happy that they got the change that they yeah. deserve and need it question last question i think before we're going to talk toss to like a very fun section this is your second world cup the first yeah. one you were in the nwsl so you took a break to go to the world cup basically in your season but now your season's over and then you have a, a break and then you're gonna leave do you think that like the european league has an advantage there or do you think the nwsl has an advantage yeah, this is hard because it's like the first time I'm doing it. So I've had so many different conversations about what the hell I should do in the next yeah. month mm -hmm. to prepare. So that's why I think the NWSL has an advantage. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like you're at the, you know, the end of season and you're going into this World Cup, like you're mid-season, like you're starting to fly. I think that personally is a little bit better. I think now, obviously, like all the European players, they take like a massive break and actually, I don't know what, um, I think FIFA put a, a rule down now that all the European national teams, they can't bring in the players until June 26, actually, when we're gathering, because because of how many injuries have been happening in, in women's football. And they said, like, you guys can't take these players like they need to they actually like need a break before the World Cup. Like you have now over a month to get them prepared. So I guess it's how you look at it. And all the European players always have done it. So it's. It's no different to them. But yeah. for me, like I'd rather I'd rather be continuing to get games and, and whatnot leading into it. But something tells me you're gonna be fine. Yeah. I'll be fine. I'll work it out. This girl's gonna do her 15 15s. I already know. We are gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we have a fun game with Lindsay Aran. Okay, welcome back to Snacks. We are going to bring back our fan favorite game, Snack or Pass with Lindsay Horan, European edition. Oh boy. So you only get three passes, seven questions. We're going to give you a scenario and then you okay. have to say snack or pass snack, obviously being like smash or pass. Like you do it or pass. And I can only pass three times. Yeah. Yeah. But snack means yes, I'll do it. Yeah. Snack means yes. Pass means pass. I got, okay. I think I got this. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you get proposed to in Paris. But they put your name in lights on the Eiffel Tower. Snack or pass? Like my fiance, my fiance puts my name there? Yeah, he's like, I'm going to do this elaborate plan. He goes all out and he's like, I'm going to put Lindsay Horan, will you marry me on the, light the Eiffel Tower in lights? Oh, my God. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's just like kind of cringe. Like too much? Yeah. Like that's like absolutely too much. And if he does it in Paris, so help me God. Oh dear. All yeah. right. Hint, yeah. hint. No Paris proposals for Linda. Yeah. Okay. Two. Okay. So we have one one pass already. You get a free trip to London. Great. 
But you have to say, you sound like you're from London, like Paul Rudd and Forgetting Sarah Marshall, at least once an hour to a London person. Snack. Good. I love that. That would be fun, would... actually. That's like a drinking game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how great my accent would be, but go on. Give it. You... Try us. Yeah. Say it again. You sound like you're from London. You said. Sound... <laughs> Oh my god, that was awful. That was she only said a... one word. It was literally awful. You, she literally just said <laughs> I you. Just, I just went to London with Tyler too, and we we just did the accents the whole time. But now I'm nervous in front of you guys. Okay, well, just close your eyes and pretend we're not here. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, we'll move I'm on. I'm not then. doing it because everyone will see this. Yeah, we have a okay. large audience. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a fresh baguette is delivered to your door every morning. Nice, fresh, hot buttered but you have to share it with a pigeon snack yeah i'd snack on yeah that. same Literally. Literally. Oh, here you go little pigeon one yeah. for me one for you <laughs> yeah that's not that bad all yeah, right no. snack you get a free tr- another free trip to the greek islands but your partner is only going to wear those short sleeve shirts completely unbuttoned the whole time and now it suddenly has a ton of chest hair sam is this pat apparently <laughs> i'm like snack wait who comes up with these questions well jay came up with this one okay S- snack yeah yeah whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, a little chest hair no or a lot yeah. of chest hair or in some yeah. cases it's okay okay so you get a free car woohoo but it's one of those stick shift uh fiats that can barely make it up a hill pass pass oh. i i can't drive stick girl wants the rolls royce after her brother's wedding yeah <laughs> um you okay. know it you drink wine for free anywhere, but every time you do, you have to be the one who explains to the whole table where the grape is from and how it was produced. This is literally <laughs> what I do, so I'm embarrassed if you're going to say pass, as if that's so embarrassing. I don't think that's that embarrassing. It's 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 fine. You literally do that, and Christy will get out her little app. I know. Christy takes app. a picture of the wine label, and then she reads us like the tasting notes. Oh, the like Vino Vino app or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so fun to pretend or try to like figure out what you're tasting. I think if I knew more about wine, I would do that. So yeah. snack or really so snack. I, yeah, I like it. I, I like it. <laughs> I would snack too. <laughs> okay. It's last one. Who I am as a person. <laughs> okay. You get a lifetime supply of cheese, but it's only brie and that's all you can ever eat in terms of cheese ever again. I don't eat a lot of cheese. Is Brie the Sorry, hold on. Brie's the one that uh it's soft. Does it smell it's horrible? Like, no. No, it's soft. I, all cheese and it, actually it probably could just be smells smelly. bad. I feel like they don't like refrigerate anything over there. No, it's just like in the shop and like sits in like a little container. Yeah, you know, they don't even really like refrigerate milk all the time and eggs and stuff. No. I guess eggs you don't have to, but I I'm always getting like room temperature milk on my cereal over there no it's like you go to the grocery store all the milk is just like in the aisle and so are the eggs and i'm just like what in the world but then i'll like go put mine in the refrigerator well yeah you're not a you want to know you want to hear a funny story when we were in france always camp one time (laughs) midge went up to um the lady and was like can i have a croissant and she goes what and so she goes do you have any more croissants and the lady goes, I'm sorry, what? And so Mitch turns to me and was like, Lynn, like, help me out here. Like, I want a croissant. And so I go, uh, a croissant? And she goes, ah, a croissant. <laughs> and then got her a croissant. Wow, that was a great <laughs> accent. A Thank croissant? you. But I was like, I'm so confused. What's happening? Well, Linda, is there anything we missed that you didn't that you wanted to say in, on snacks that you didn't get a chance to? Uh, you tell me. Mm. I, I don't know. Well, we're excited to see you eventually we're so excited that you get to make it to your brother's wedding congrats to him and his bride congrats to you for being engaged Ah! so pumped let go all right linda can you give us a chomp (laughs) oh oh a sharp chomp people have been Uh, going above and beyond with the chomps i love it Okay, thanks so much again, Linda. What a great chat that was. Next week on the podcast, Emily Fox. How exciting. Yes, Foxy. We talk about the World Cup, about North Carolina, and about how she just slops food into a giant pile on her plate and then just eats it all touching. She doesn't have a sophisticated palate like me. 
So. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Do not forget to rate and review this podcast. And we might read your review on snacks like this one from DL Wilson five that says Sam and Lynn leave me with a grin every Thursday. Love the weekly game recap, the friendship and honesty between them. This podcast serves the best snacks into the world of women's soccer with their insightful, humorous and refreshing questions for their guests. Don't ever stop. Oh, and congratulations Lynn on your engagement. Sam, make sure you stretch more and have a banana before swimming less cramps. Thank you. One last thing, Lynn. One last thing is I'm going to get outside and I'm going to go to a Memorial Day barbecue. Ooh. Because... And then I also bought cornbread mix. So I'm going to make that later. My secret to making cornbread is there's no secret. It's just you take the warm tray to the couch afterwards with a fork and you just eat half of it. Yeah. Until your stomach gets really in cramps and you're in pain and then you just keep going. Not me. I have a, st- I, I literally have a stomach of steel. I know your stomach lining is so strong. Mine is so weak. Do you want me to read this part? Is this my part? Yeah, you can read that. I'm sorry. I read the review too. I feel like I've been doing over reading. That's okay. You're good at reading, so you can stick to what you know. Look what I just got. Wow. What that be? Oh, can that you looks nice. That? Yum. I okay. can. He's All right. We'll let you, we will let you guys go now. Don't forget to subscribe to Snacks on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcasts. Snacks is produced by Jay Wolf, Lauren Day, Patrick Cudino, and John Murray. For more great women's sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com and be sure to follow Just Women's Sports on all your favorite channels. I'm Sam Lewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And you've been listening to Snacks. Ow.